the network. So many people that a lot of times people admire seem like, hey, we just come in a room and X, Y, Z, this is me, especially in the entertainment world, right? I'm the big stars, but in the back end, especially when there's these people that are oftentimes even bigger than them in terms of business and controlling everything, you have to be able to navigate and play that ego game. And I, and I don't even mean that negatively, because even what you said, as far as dealing with other people's egos, oftentimes causes you to deal with your own ego because the only reason their ego becomes a problem is also the co conflict with your own ego. Right. Right. So, right. How do I manage this and how do I not escalate the process or, or make something go awry just because I have my own ego issues to deal with. Yeah. So it's an interesting aspect of things, but I think acknowledging that you have one is always going to be the first step. And then it's not something you should try to get rid of. It's just how do I channel, it positively productively right it's, it's a tool to be used but most people are like <laughs> they're they're victims of their ego you know what i mean versus masters of it right i think two things that i um had for the longest time unfortunately was i was i felt like one the whole world was against me like i acted like you know like i i, I acted like everyone was out to get me and um i think it came from, it definitely came from like, back in 2017, I had a really good agent and he got me like 30 festival gigs. And like, no one knew me at the time. I was like 20K on, no, 15K on Instagram just because of a, a video went viral. Um, and like 70K on Facebook or whatever, it didn't really matter. But like, he just liked my music and he was like, let's get you some shows. And he had a lot of connections. And a week later, I'm getting like, all these offers to play shows for money that I've never, I never had this much money before. Like I was like 19. And, um, but when I went to these shows, some of them, a lot of them actually were really, um, I realized like the show industry, even when, even the most professional ones, even the biggest ones, um, you know, you can't control all the employees there. And a lot of them do some like, really a fucking annoying shit you know and um like what? there's been festivals i've been to where i had to just walk all day following this person just to collect a check to like not collecting like not getting paid um a lot of times there was a lot of times oh my god this was the worst i now i remember this is the worst i show up and they have my tech writer, right? What every, everything I need to perform. And it's not much, but it's very specific things that I need. Um, like I need a drum throne because I sit, like I sit on a chair or at least a chair, right? And um, I'm not a DJ. They, everyone kept thought, thinking I was a DJ, but I'm playing on the pads and the audience needs to see me perform. Like I worked so hard learning how to play this shit live. I'm not about to have that blocked off by a DJ booth, you know? So my, I always sent my tech writer, I always sent it, they even, the buyers even signed it, like that we read it, you know? Um, and I show up and they're like, all right, what do you want, CDJs? And I'm like, dude, did you read my writer? <laughs> so yeah, I go on stage and uh, nothing's set up and I'm freaking out and I'm like, oh my God, like I don't have anything, you know? So that, that happened a lot. Um, another festival, man, there was a, like a really, really trashy um, like limousine service that picked me up. Um, and yeah, I almost died, long story short. It was like the guy's car, um, his brakes failed. Oh, um, and I don't know, maybe God was watching over me, but I was, I was like, hey, can we stop by like a, a convenience store? I just want to like grab some water or something. I'm really thirsty. The guy's like, yeah, no problem. He pulls in as he pulled in out from the highway, which by the way, he was going 80 miles per hour. He pulled in to the parking lot and his brakes failed. And we were there for like an hour waiting for another ride. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah, a lot of shit. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, I think, and oh, and I never had a manager. I, I like tried out managers. 
So I never had like my guy with me. I never had anyone around me. So when I went to all these festivals, it was all on my own. So I felt like I had to like really defend myself. So that, that was the defensive attitude. Got you. And from that, from that, when it comes to negotiating deals, when it comes to like even getting like opportunities in the first place, I wouldn't even think like financially, I would think this guy's trying to screw me over. You know what I mean? Or I would think even if I got an opportunity, I'd be like, okay, what, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this guy want? You know? Uh, another, another side of me, I think was, like the ego thing, like I really thought, um, I really thought I deserved things. Like, not like instead of like deserving something, like you want to say you earn something, you work hard to actually get it. And if you haven't gotten it yet, then you just got to keep working hard. Yeah. But my attitude was like, I compare a lot. Like, like I would, I would be trying to, you know, run as fast as I can to jump over this cliff and make it over to the other cliff, you know? Yeah. And I keep failing and I keep failing. And, but I see people who, from what I see, you know, from, from my point of view, like have shit handed to them and are soaring over me to the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, now that's a wrong mindset, obviously, because you have first of all, man. So yeah, because first, yeah, because first of all, you don't know what who they are, what they've been through. You have no idea. And second of all, like that's life. Like you're always going to see people soar over you. You're always going to fail your way to success. It's mm -hmm. always going to seem like when you make it, there were hundreds of other people who uh, made it before you. But one thing that I never um, learned until not too long ago is, but when you make it, you made it. And that's all that matters, you know? And that immediately just shut off my whole attitude about, I deserve this, I deserve that, I've earned, or more it's like, I'm going to keep working hard and I know I'm going to get it one day whether it's tomorrow or, you know, two or three years from now. 100%. And believe it or not, I've been getting amazing opportunities. I mean, I'm like that, and I'm the least stressed that I've ever been. Um, and, you know, I'm just happy because I don't care about that kind of, I don't have that attitude anymore, you know. that and That's what I was talking about earlier when we were talking before this interview was like, um, that's one thing I didn't learn from the, the mentors. I always learned about how to hustle because, you know, most people, and unfortunately, but fortunately, because that's competition for me, most people don't have the hustle that like you and I have. Most people don't really have it, right? You've got all these crazy, um, awesome like programs and videos and free content on YouTube to really learn how to technically hustle, how to financially hustle, how to, how to have your mind right, you know? Um, in the music industry though, they don't really talk to you about like how to, ha how to like actually have your mind right, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think like a lot of times, you know, when you, when you see like motivational speakers and stuff, you don't really relate that to your music as much as you obviously would with Brandman Sean. Right, like when you watch Ray Michelle, your mind, your your music hat is on. Yeah. Uh, when you're um, when you're watching like you know Tony Robbins or whatever, your your Tony Robbins hat is on. <laughs> you know, you're jumping on your trampoline. But uh, but I never like I I thought I was like combining the two, but I never I never really was until like not too long ago. It's difficult. The pressure that comes from watching so many other people, it, you know, you get that external input and now it's fucking up your own progress, the way you think about yourself, the way you see the world. And it creates that unhappiness. It creates that anxiety. And even like you said, yeah. feeling nervous, knowing who you are, 
now you start to be in conflict with the world. Everybody's against me. Something's working against me. How come me, not me? How come not me now? All right. I, yeah. I definitely in that process, especially when you add an industry that can be as chaotic as music. We've been trained, um, you know, from childhood through a very segmented system or, or structured system. And you do this on the test, A, B, C, D, plus you know, E, F, like this is the answer to the test. You get 100. I always tell people, someone can have D. And then, and then you look at your friend and your friend got an A. And he was like, oh, I studied for this test this morning. And I was like, dude, I've been studying for the past week for this test. Why did I get a fucking C on this? And you got an A. Exactly. You know? That's life. And even worse than that, music, unlike school, someone can have these answers and have an A. And you can copy those answers and fail in real life. Right? Right. You, just because you have the same answers in music. And there's so many other factors. It's so nuanced. So I definitely understand that that period. And I feel like people who make it through that period and are able to come out of it un, you know, I I won't even say unscarred because the scar is maybe a lesson, a reminder, but unjaded, right? Then those are the people who could win with both sides, the success and the happiness, spirituality, however you want to look at it. Now tell me this though, you never had a manager, right? Never at all, right? It's the network.